Phase one really couldn't have gone much better for the Oxford team. Early positive signs now confirmed in the published research. So this is a, an important milestone on the path, but we, we're now um, moving rapidly forwards to try to evaluate whether the vaccine actually protects the population um, uh, by uh, conducting large-scale trials. And we have 10,000 people already vaccinated around the world. We still need to see how the vaccine performs in older people who are more at risk of severe disease than the people we vaccinated in this study. So that's the subject of future work and there'll be more publications to come. The Oxford vaccine is adapted from a common cold virus found in chimpanzees. Spike glycoprotein, a genetic material from the COVID-19 virus, was added. The hope is the human body will develop immunity to the spike protein, stopping the virus from entering cells and preventing infection. Tests indicate the vaccine produces two reactions, by producing a defensive antibody response, as well as T-cells which attack the infected cells. T-cell response peaked just 14 days after volunteers were injected. Antibody response peaked at 28 days. And side effects were minor, mainly just tiredness and headaches, treated with paracetamol. I'm hopeful. I got my fingers crossed, but to say that I'm 100% confident that we'll get a vaccine uh, this year or indeed next year uh, is, alas, just uh, you know, an exaggeration. We're not there yet. This is a hugely encouraging result for the team here in Oxford, but provoking an immune reaction is just the first stage in vaccine development. Phase three trials already underway in the UK, South Africa and Brazil are looking at issues such as optimal dosage and exactly how much protection vaccinated people have when exposed to the actual coronavirus. Ellie Cannon was injected with the Oxford vaccine as part of the phase three trials. She's a family doctor herself and has lost friends and patients to the virus. Rather than sitting in front of the TV and screaming at the mortality rates every day or screaming at politicians or getting annoyed on social media, I, I really felt very strongly um, that I wanted to do something. I just wanted to be a part of the answer. I, I don't think there's going to be one answer to COVID. I think there's going to be a few different answers. Nine in 10 vaccine projects end in failure, and there is no guarantee that the early promise of the Oxford trials will lead to an effective COVID jab. But it is a very positive step. Paul Brennan, Al Jazeera, Oxford. Well, Professor Adrian Hill is part of that research group at Oxford University, and he explains what will happen next. The immune responses that the vaccine produces have been found to be pretty encouraging. We're seeing that both arms of the immune system are triggered into action, producing antibodies on the one hand and T cells, part of the cellular immune system, on the other, and at numbers that are pretty encouraging, about the level that you would see in somebody who's had a fairly severe, significant COVID infection. So these are really about as good as we could have hoped at this stage of the vaccine's journey. So we're at the stage now of looking for efficacy of the vaccine, and that has involved recruiting almost 10,000 people into a so-called phase three trial. Those people are being recruited at 19 centres around the country in Britain, and we are following those to see who gets infected by COVID and who doesn't. Now, that will come to a conclusion as soon as we have enough cases in the trial. That hasn't happened yet. It will probably take a couple of months uh, at least yet. But uh, we will get an answer on whether or not there are more cases or less cases, ideally, of vaccine, of, uh, of COVID in the vaccine group than in the controls. We can't judge how long efficacy lasts until we have some efficacy, so we don't know that yet. But we are confident that, as with nearly all vaccines, the immune responses last years, not months. And uh, even though they may decline a bit over time, we don't expect that to be an initial problem. In other words, the vaccine should last for at least a year, we think, hopefully longer than that. So the main problem right now is to get a vaccine that we can deploy and use, even if it only did last for a year, that would still be very useful indeed. And what we've shown in this report today is that you can give the vaccine again and boost immunity with a further dose.